grey button there, you can see that indicates that it's automatically been linked. So now that we've actually changed the data, we've brought it up to the level of detail we want, made it the right colour, uh, we've got the text in good shape, the first thing we need to do is to actually author the different pages. So what I'm going to do is activate this default landing page here for the catalogue. And before we do anything, let's go and preview and see what we get before we've actually de even done any work. So I'm just going to click on the preview, which is sort of like a trial publish. And again, you can see the catalogue published in Internet Explorer. And we can see that even before we've done anything, we've still got quite a lot of functionality. We've got the model in a format that we can roll around and zoom in and zoom out. But right now we'd have no parts on the right hand side. So let's just set up this view. So first of all we want a default camera angle um, just so that we've got a good view when the user first lands on that page. So that looks good to me. I'm going to click on set viewpoint. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change this and have a, a more meaningful name. So we're going to set that up and call that sheet one. So that's going to be the first master sheet of the parts catalog. The next thing we're going to do is we need to enable some parts to be visible on that page. By default none of the parts are visible and you can see that because they're in grey down the bottom here. So we can set these up individually and so you see here when it goes bold that part will then be visible on the page. Or because there is a link between those two data sets what we can do is right click on the sheet, come down here and automatically activate all of the rows based on what's visible in the 3D model. So if I now come over and preview this, you can now see that we've got uh, the same functionality as before, only now we've got a much better default view of the 3D model. And we've got a parts list on the right hand side and we can see here that it's automatically hotspotted. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to create another more detailed sheet that shows perhaps an exploded view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus in on this middle section right here. So we're going to focus in on the casing and these flanges, gaskets and bolts. So what we want to do is just a very simple explosion of those two parts of that middle assembly and ignore everything else. So what I'm going to do is come over here, insert a new sheet, and what I'll do is just drag that so it's under the sheet one. So that's how we set up the automatic transition between the two views. And we'll activate that sheet and we'll just rename that to sheet two. So the next thing we want to do is remove irrelevant parts of the assembly. So if I click down on the assembly over here, I've just got a, a very easy structure here to be able to do that. And so now we've got what, what we actually need in order to then focus in on the view we want to create. So what I'm going to do is just zoom out a little there and I'm actually going to do a drag selection to select the parts that we want to explode, including the part we're going to explode away from. So now what I'm going to do is click on the explosion wizard. So the explosion wizard will just do this for uh, what we need automatically. So if we go through, we can then first of all set the explosion type. So linear explosion, explosion on one axis, radial, uh, so like spokes around a wheel or blades around a turbine. So we just need to stick with the uh, linear explosion. The next thing I need to do is to set the strength and direction of the explosion. So we're going to do it perpendicular to the surface of the flange. So I just drag the manipulator there and all we need to do is just drag that up a little like that. And here's our exploded view. We can adjust that, so if I want to ungroup some of these parts, so you can see here it automatically grouped parts that are in the same plane. I've just selected one and made it leave that, so we've got complete control how these are positioned. If I want to regroup those, I just need to select it, click on Make Group, and you can see now that it's back in that group. 
If I want to change the position of parts, I can move that up, move that down. And you know, if I want to change the anchor, we can do that as well. Uh, what I can also do is I can adjust the position. So if I want to make some fine tuning adjustments, we can do that here as well. And so that's it. That's our explosion. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do the same thing over here with this uh, set of the uh, assembly. So what I'll do is just select those and again we'll click on the explosion wizard. So you can see we can actually do multiple explosions in different directions to get the view that we need. So what we need to do is just drag that to the right surface and then what we'll do is just drag that uh, to where we need. And so we've got a similar view but going in an opposite direction for these parts here. And there's our two sets of explosions. You can see we actually have axial lines on there. These axial lines really are only there to use for the 2D view and we can switch them on and off. Uh, I'm going to leave them on because we're actually going to create a 2D view as well. So first of all what I think we'll do is just create, set this default viewpoint so that when we come into the 3D page this is the view that we see. Then what we're going to do is go over to the 2D preview window and this shows us uh, an isometric hidden line view um, as a preview for this um, uh, particular view here. So what we also want to do is we want to create some callouts. So at the moment we haven't actually enabled any rows to be visible on this page. As you can see here they're all in grey. There's no black and bold rows on there. So what we're going to do is just use this simple tool down here to activate with visible geometry. And so now it's just activated just the rows that we have in view in the 3D view there. So because we have some item numbers, we can actually automatically generate callouts. So if I click on the generate callouts view, you can see it automatically generates those along with their leader lines. So all we need to do now is click on the create. And we'll just give that a name in keeping with the IPC page. And there we have it. There's our 2D view. And in fact, you can see that we've got the hot spotting there. So now that we've actually done that, let's click on the preview and go and have a look at what that looks like. Again, we can see the default view that we saw before. Now, if I right click on this part of the assembly, we can see another sheet we can go to to see it in more detail. And so there's our explosion. There's our subset of parts that we automatically added. And if I click over here, here's our 2D hotspotted view. So I can move that down, we can see that in more detail. And what I can do here is you can see that we've also got the hotspots there.